Hi girls, welcome to this month's Activate Her Teaching. Hashtag, I am rooted in praise. So we may have fooled you a little bit, especially if you have been involved in church for a long time. We might have like thrown you a little bit on this month's topic because if you've been in church for a while, you would interchange the terms of praise and worship to mean something that we offer to God. Right. But that's not the context we're going to be talking about this month. We are actually going to be using another form of the word or another definition of the word and um, the way that most people would interpret it. And we're going to be talking about the how and the why we express admiration and encouragement to each other. And our verse that we picked to be our key verse this month explains really nicely how not to do it. Uh, Proverbs 26, 28 says, hatred is the root of slander and insecurity the root of flattery. So the, the words praise and slander are actually opposites. And what we say to each other, whether it's praise or slander, has a greater impact on that other person than probably any other interaction that we have with them. Right. And so this month, we're going to take a good look at the words that come out of our mouth. And uh, when we walk away, we are going to be a little more confident in the ability to say, hashtag, I am rooted in praise. We are going to talk about the connection between our words and the motives behind them. And if that's not enough, we're actually then going to talk about how we can change our lifestyle to become one that is built on intentionality of living a lifestyle that praises others instead of talking negatively about them, which could not come at a better time in my life. I feel like the Lord always knows when to hit hard with these topics. <laughs> and... Um, not only are we going to talk about that, but we also are going to talk about false praise, which is about being more for show. It doesn't really come from any place in our heart. We just want to flatter somebody. So Right. It, it, I think we really, um, it's good to figure these things out because yep. um, sometimes we can say one thing yep. um, out of our mouths and for some reason and not necessarily mean it, but... Um, we do it for a reason, but not the right reason. So we're going to dig around a little bit this month and get to the root of uh, why we do these kind of things. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And the Passion Translation puts it very nicely, quite bluntly, actually. It says <laughs> that the root of slander is actually hatred, and the root of flattery is insecurity. So... I guess they're just calling us out and they're going to call it what it is. Proverbs 26, 28, hatred, the root of slander, flattery, the root of insecurity. So let's talk about slander first, which the dictionary defines it as the utterance of false charges or misrepresentations which defame or damage another person's reputation. And then flattery is defined as insincere, or excessive praise coming from wrong motives. And it goes on to talk about slander as being something that we inflict upon someone. So if we are slandering, talking about somebody with the sole purpose of changing a person's opinion, then to get to the root of that, we have to ask ourselves a hard question. And that question is, why? Why am I speaking this and what am I trying to inflict upon that person? When I use my words in an unpraiseworthy way, I'm obviously doing something. I'm going somewhere. My motives are in this place that are probably not pure. And we have to remember that Slander is the act of making a false spoken statement that causes people to have a bad opinion about someone else. So slander actually has a cause and effect outcome. So something happens to me, say you do something to me that irritates me, and then I go to someone else and I vent to that person about what you did to me that caused me to be irritated. And now I have just changed that person's opinion of you by my words. So that's the effect of it. 
So everything that we say really has a cause and effect. And if we, don't you think if we could get to the point where we look at our words in that manner, like what is the cause, what is the effect of this, we might be more cautious in what we say and what we, how we express ourselves mm-hmm. to absolutely, people. Absolutely, absolutely. I think so. And there's a scripture in Proverbs that says, let another man praise you and not your own mouth, a stranger and not your own lips. And uh, the word praise in the Hebrew language is actually to commend. So another man commends you and not your own praise. But I feel like we have so few people praising us sometimes that we feel like we have to praise Mm ourselves. You know, and then that takes on a whole nother dynamic in how we talk, doesn't it? Don't you think? Yeah, I think so too. And I, and I think so. And I think it's imp- that brings us to the importance of who we sur- surround ourselves with too, yeah. you know, so that, but um, because, you know, we, our words, every word we speak has got like a cause and a, has an effect on people. Um, the, and it has great impact on the people we're talking to. It, the words that we speak have power. Right. So we have the power to speak life into someone's situation or into someone's life, or we have the power to speak death. So, right. And when we are not speaking life, you know, what's the motive? Yep. What's the motive for tearing down? Um, the verse, um, our verse for this month in the English Revised Version says it this way, that liars hate the people they hurt mm. and false praise can hurt people. So... False praise is an insincere form of flattery. And yeah. we, we don't want that. We want to stay as far away from that as we can. Um, uh, the New Testament book of James has got a lot to say about how we use our words and how we use our tongue. And in chapter 3, he points out that uh, sometimes we use our tongue to praise the Lord. And we use that very same tongue to tear down or curse those who God made in his image. So blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. And he says, it's just not right. Right. And um, he goes on to make the point that you can't get both fresh water and bitter water out of the same cistern or out of the same spring. Um, And you can't pick olives from a fig tree and you can't pick figs from a grapevine. So um, it just doesn't work that way. So if we are speaking both life and death out of the same mouth, then something is wrong in our heart. Yeah. Yeah. And God has given us the gift of words. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he's a wordy guy. He, he wrote the word. He gave, he speaks to us through his word. Mm -hmm. It is the word. We need words. We're all about words. Mm -hmm. We just have to discover the art of using our words the same way that God does, it's good. which, like that. you know, he speaks to us appropriately. God speaks to us appropriately. God speaks to us kindly and in a caring way. And we are a reflection of him when we allow the words to come out of our mouth. We are reflecting him, his character. And if we're not using the, our words in an appropriate manner, then we're not reflecting his character very well. Um, we will never be able to identify why words matter or why the way we use them might not reflect him well or might be wrong until we get to the heart of why we're doing what we're doing. And to help us do that, we dug into the life application study Bible, which laid out for us four types of tongue. And there's one, it's called the controlled tongue. The next one is the caring tongue. The next one was the conniving tongue. And then there was the careless tongue. And we're going to start with the conniving tongue. Now connive in the dictionary is defined this way. It's to cooperate secretly or to have a secret understanding. So you and I have a secret understanding that that third person doesn't know about. And we've connived if we've come up with something that we're going to spring on them at the last minute they don't know about. It's like people connive to throw a 
60th birthday party or whatever, you know. <laughs> but the a, a conniving tongue uses speech filled with wrong motives, gossip, slander, and it twists the truth. Now, we need to get to the root of what is behind the conniving tongue. And it might be that you are speaking to me about somebody and you've got that person on a pedestal. But I know something about that person that would knock that person right off of your pedestal. You would never look at this person the same way if you knew what I knew. And unfortunately, the conniving tongue wants to do just that. I'm going to give you just enough information that you are never going to look at that person the same way. And that's not right. Oh, shame on you. Shame on me. <laughs> that is not right. So slander, you have to remember that slander is the act of making a false statement that causes people to have a bad opinion of someone else. We can do that in so many ways in our family relationships. You know, we have to be really careful. The mature person, we have to remember this too, that the mature person knows how not to allow somebody's opinion. Because let's be honest, people are always going to connive. Mm -hmm. There's always conniving tongues in our day, in our everyday life, right? Mm -hmm. And so we have to become mature enough to where we don't, become swayed by that conniving tongue. Mm -hmm. That's good. And I think too, sometimes this happens, um, you know, it's not a necessarily an intentional thing that we get into the, to the conniving situation. But if we are prone to the next type of tongue we're gonna talk about, which is the careless tongue, mm -hmm. then we can easily fall into the conniving tongue because the careless tongue just, just wags. <laughs> It just talks without really any consideration of what's coming out, you yeah. know, without filtering anything. And it could be lies and it could be, you know, you, you know, cursing words. It can be, uh, you know, anger that kind of like is quick tempered and just spouts out. It's really just, it's just, you know, whatever thought comes to my mind, I'm just going to blurt it out. Yeah. That's what a careless tongue sounds like. And um, what we have to understand is what James says to us in one, James 1.19, where he says, understand this, you must all be quick to listen slow to speak and slow to get angry so yeah and that was one of the first verses that the lord ever used to prick my heart actually slapped me right across the head with it i think honestly <laughs> it felt more like a wow this is about going to undo me because i am not good at any one of those in my early uh christian walk that verse really was transitional for me because I had a very careless tongue and I was not quick to listen, nor was I slow to speak. Well, I wasn't slow to become angry either, but that's another, that's video. A, that's another teaching. The quick to, or the slow to speak one, I was constantly very vocal. I, I always had an opinion and I was always very quick to share that opinion. And I also, unfortunately, am pretty hypercritical. I, I can see what's wrong much easier than I can see what's right. So I'm pretty critical. And we had gone to visit friends of ours that Pat had gone to college with. We were um, went to visit them for the weekend and they had just recently bought a house. They had remodeled one of the, you know, gone room by room to remodel it. And I went into the guest room and I noticed right away that they had wallpapered it, but they had hung the wallpaper upside down. And the only reason I knew that is because my mother-in-law had used the same exact wallpaper and hers was right side up. And so I kind of joked about it. I laughed a little bit and I said, do you guys know that you hung the wallpaper upside down? And they were like, no, uh, no, we did not. How do you know that? And I showed them and they were looked at it and they were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that we hung the wallpaper upside down. But then the wife looked at me and she goes, well, we knew that if anybody was going to point out something that was wrong, it would be you. Ooh. And I was hit so hard in my heart by that. I thought that's how 
they see me. They see me as the one that's going to point out what's wrong. Yeah, that is that was a tough one to swallow. <laughs> that was really hard. That was so painful. It still hurts me a little bit in my heart because yeah, sure. it caused me to think about how people saw me, but I still wonder if that's how people see me. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think it's a perfect example of, of how the words that come out of our mouth whether intentional or not, um, really can have such an impact not only on that moment or but now still, and, yeah. you know, as you struggle with it yeah. today. And and um, I think it helps us too to really understand that not everything that comes into our mind needs to be said. Yep. And I think that's a good check. Um, we don't have to speak every thought that comes into our minds. And I think sometimes God allows us into certain situations. He gives us a glimpse into certain situations and we notice things solely for the purpose of prayer and not necessarily to run our mouth about. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, for because sure. that's what a careless tongue does. The careless tongue is hypercritical. Yeah. Hypercritical. And, you know, it's hard not to pick out the everything that's wrong, but we don't have to, even when, even when we notice it, we don't have to talk about it. And when we are hyper, hypercritical, um, that's how we see everything. We see everything as something that needs to be corrected. Mm-hmm. And um, I, it can have such an impact on our family situations, um, uh, on our work situations. We, I mean, there's times where we have to give feedback and correction. It's totally necessary. And, you know, as parents, we are constantly doing it. But there's a difference between correction and criticism. Yeah. Right. And um, if we are going to deliver some correction to someone, if we really need to sandwich it with a little bit of praise so that it's palatable and it can be received. Uh, If our words are going to have impact, we want them to have positive impact. And if they're not going to be received, they're not going to do any good. So it's just really important to be able to balance that um, genuine praise with the correction. Yeah, it's that constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. It's learning how to say, is this going to be constructive in their lives? And we also have to get to a point where we can learn better how to receive constructive criticism. Because I think sometimes we are so standoffish to anybody saying anything that we don't allow people to speak into our lives. Mm -hmm. And God doesn't want us to share the dirt of people, but there are times that he doesn't want us to remain silent either. Mm -hmm. He wants us to be able to speak a truth, not give false praise, not say something just because you want to be liked or... Um, you know, you want that person to accept you in some way. So we can't give false praise, right. but we can learn how to receive and accept the fact that we don't always have to hear everything good either. Mm-hmm. Um, but God does also want us to learn how to see the good in others and point out when we see mm-hmm something good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he wants us to believe the best. He wants us to see the best and he wants to draw the best out of people, right? Exactly. And we can do that with our words. And um, so this is where the law of replacement fits. Uh, And if, um, so if we're going to take out a bad habit of slander or um, insincere praise, then we need to replace it with something. That's right. So we're going to look at the life of Jesus. Look at the thing, not the life of Jesus. We're going to look at the things that Jesus told us and taught us. as to how we can speak to each other in a way that's going to bring life. Right. Right. The controlled tongue. That's where Jesus is all about. That's the the solution. Learning how to control. Learning how to think before we speak. It knows when to give advice and it knows when to be silent. It asks questions in the mind before it comes out the mouth. It asks, the controlled tongue says, why? Do I feel like I need to say this right now? Am I trying to prove a point? Am I trying to just be right? Am I trying to convince somebody that they should see things my way? Their way is wrong. Um, the, is the motive behind it to help them? Or am I just out to hurt them? Do I What am I trying to inflict upon them in this moment? And James shows us that our tongues should praise others with honest compliments that lift them up. We don't have to give 
false praise? Why do we feel like we have to not be sincere in how we talk to other people? Mm -hmm. If we learn how to see people the, the same way that God does, that's really what it comes down to is, is changing how we view people, learning to receive people the same way that God receives them. The Learn same way God receives us. <laughs> the same way that God receives us, learning how to offer people grace, learning how to give them mercy. We reveal God's character through the words that we speak and also how we receive other people. Um, the heart of the godly thinks carefully before speaking. The mouth of the wicked overflows with evil words. So not every thought needs to be spoken. Sometimes you just got to pray it out. <laughs> no, and I think when you can start to see people that way, the way God sees them, that's when we engage the caring tongue. That's when we engage mm -hmm. um, the tongue that speaks truthfully while seeking to encourage, even when we need to correct. Yeah. We speak truthfully seeking to encourage um, and not engage in flattery or um, in insincere praise. Right. That we keep our praise sincere. The lips of the godly speak helpful words, but the mouth of the wicked speaks perverse words, according to Proverbs 10.32. The right word spoken at the right time can be life-changing. And the same way, a careless word can leave an, a lasting impact too and even cause ruin or destruction in mm -hmm. people's lives. So it's time that we begin to make fewer excuses about what comes out of our mouth and the fact that we can't control it because we can control it. Uh, we can control our tongues when we put more thought and care into realizing that God has given the, us the ability to do so through the Holy Spirit and through the fruit of the spirit of self-control. Right. I mean, after all, James again says, that you can control a 1,200-pound wild horse with a one-pound bit. So we have the ability. He's given us the ability and the self-control when we own it yeah. to um, control what's coming out of our mouths. Yeah. Right now, we live at a time where we're all about our freedom of speech. So instead of empathizing with others, we want to fix them and we want to tell them why they're viewpoint, why their stand is wrong. We want them to come on our side and understand and believe like us. To the point where we connive and control in exactly. order to do it. Yeah, exactly. And we're not supposed to fix people. And we don't want to be held accountable when our words hurt people. We want people to get over it. We want people to just accept that that's how we are. And we want them to understand that we have the rights to say whatever we want, but that's not what Jesus said. Jesus said that he, we would uh, have to give an account for every idle word that we spoke, every idle word. So it's time that we get to a point where we become more thoughtful when we're together about the words that we're speaking that are gonna cause an opinion to be formed about another person that we're talking to. So it's less slander, less flattery, and giving more genuine praise. Uh, seeing other people the way that God sees them. Learning how to accept people when they don't share the same viewpoint instead of feeling like we are either going to go talk about them behind their back or we're going to lead them to believe that we just love everything about them when we actually don't. Don't agree. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jesus also said um, the words um, that words that came from our heart defile us mm. and that out of the abundance of our heart, the mouth speaks. So we have to, when we look at what's coming out of our mouth, it's coming from what's in our heart. Right. So that is where we need to look. And that brings us to our activation plan because we're going to keep digging here for a second. Yeah. <laughs> um, we for about two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> we want you to check. Check yourself. Um, what's coming out of your mouth towards others, um, but also towards yourself. You know, what are the things, what are the motives behind what you're saying to those people around you? What are the motives behind what you're saying to yourself? What's that soft self-talk that goes yeah. on that nobody else hears? And 
we're going to ask God to reveal the motives behind that. Is there hatred? Is there resentment um, that are ca that's causing us to want to slander, to get wrapped up and sucked into that t type of conversation? Mm -hmm. um, or am I one who gives false praise just to be liked or to be to impress? I'm uh, that's where I that's where I get caught up. I don't. I don't like to say harsh things, right. but I will say I'll make I'll just make you feel amazing, um, whether I believe it or not. <laughs> you know, so um, so well, that just gives me a pause. Not very often. I mean, there's a lot. <laughs> Check yourself again. Where are those words coming from? Where are those um, negative things you say to yourself coming from? Where is that stuff that rises up when you want to be careless or conniving with your speech? Um, has someone? You know, is that the way you grew up? Right. Because a lot of people have grown up that way. Um, have people spoken that way to you your whole life? You know, that, that causes, you know, that takes you back to, so you can get to the root of what's going on. And sometimes the enemy also wants to whisper those things in mm -hmm. your ear and we buy into it, especially in the self-talk thing. But look at the way that those things have played out in your life too, because, you know, have they played out into broken relationships? Have they played out into um, self-harm? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, whether it's with, I don't know, cutting, yeah, overeating. You know, there are ways that we inflict harm on ourselves because of our yeah. thought, the, think, the words we've spoken to ourselves, yeah. uh, self-esteem issues. Um, and I think really just taking the time to ask these questions, to dig around in this dirt is going to help you to determine what is going on at the heart level. <laughs> That is, that's really good. It's so important to do a heart check because James also tells us that where there is jealousy or selfish ambition, that's where you're going to find disorder and every kind of evil. And so God used a verse from Proverbs in my life a long time ago when I, when he wanted to confront me with a truth about where my desire to slander somebody or where my conniving tongue was coming from and where my careless tongue may be set. And that is in this verse in Proverbs 27, 4 that says, wrath is cruel and anger is an overwhelming flood, but who is able to endure and stand before the sin of jealousy? And he began to show me that I had a jealousy in my heart towards somebody and that's why I couldn't, she could never stand before me in a pure and, and spotless way. I could never see her as good of anything. I could never see anything good about her. I Everything she did bothered me and I picked it apart relentlessly. And so we have to get to a point where we can accept hard truth about ourselves. I've got jealousy towards this person, whether it's their looks or what they're doing in their life, their marriage, their, their home, uh, it seems like everything goes well for that person and they have everything I want. And so we begin to build a case against them as to why they're no good. And we tell other people all the time about the no good that we see in others. And God is saying, stop that. Look, get to the heart of it. Let's just be real and honest here and say, you know what? It's about you. It's owning yourself, your own fleshly desires and demands. That flesh is very demanding and it wants to fight against us all the time. And we have to get to a point where we stop saying, I can tell everybody somebody else's secrets and I can connive against them when actually we should just be talking about our own secrets mm -hmm. and we should be sharing with other people what's going on in, a, in an honest way. Pray for me in this matter because I don't know if you've noticed or not, but I am pretty hypercritical and I really could use your prayer. So we have to get to a heart check. We have to be, get to a place where we're willing to just say, this is who I am in my flesh. I'm going to own it, but I want God and I want help changing mm -hmm. it. I want to be who God wants me to be. Yeah. Not this person that struggles with jealousies, insecurities, not this person that flatters other people because I'm so insecure in my own self that I can't 
let them be who God made them to be. Mm -hmm. That's where it comes from, is our mm -hmm. own insecurities. Yeah, that's powerful. Chrissy and I are gonna do this too. We're gonna keep a journal and note our criticisms and our praises. What came easier for you? What did you say that you wish you hadn't said? What do you wish you had said that you didn't say? And which was greater, your criticisms or your compliments? Or is there one person that you struggle to offer compliments to and it's very easy for you to criticize and see something wrong what about that one person that really gets under your skin and drives you crazy mm -hmm. maybe that's the person that over the next two weeks God says I want you to go out of your way to offer them praise not false praise mm -hmm. find something good yep. and Look tell them, them. Mm -hmm. see them the way that God sees them. Yes. And you'll begin to see the things in them that are genuinely praiseworthy. Yes. And you know, and we're not we're just act we're just asking for you to take five minutes at the end of the day and yep. just take, you know, just evaluate, you know, what are the things that I you know, what worked for day, what didn't work, and where was yep. my heart in that and why did I do that or why didn't I do that? And yeah. And um and then, you know, we and as you just as you walk out this month, you know, uh, keeping in mind this topic of praise praising other people just we want you to remember that where there is slander there is hatred mm -hmm. where there is flattery there is insecurity what we say matters as much as the motive behind um, what the words that we're using and it is all a reflection of what's going on in here so less flattery less slander more genuine praise so what do you think you yeah know what can we do I this? I think so. Are we I ready? Think, I think so. It really is about looking at ourselves. Yeah. Taking our eyes off of other people then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's always always where we have to start. Yeah. Always where we have to start. And then you're going to be ready to speak life and to be able to say confidently, hashtag I am rooted in praise. Have a great discussion, girls. We'll see you next month.